Hello YouTube. Now, firstly, ap apologies for not making one of these videos for quite a while. Uh, for one reason or another, things just got in the way. Um, but I'm back now and um, back to my painting. Now, this painting here is a portrait of my friend Katagina. Okay, Kat for short. Only to me though, you've got to pronounce the name properly. And um, I met her this year and um, she's an artist too, a very well trained artist from, you know, somewhere local. And um, she's been quite a big inspiration on in my work this year. And um, as such, I've painted a portrait. Now, um, something you've got to know about Katagina is she's an amazingly um, talented photographer, okay? And so what I wanted to do here was get everything right and try and make, in this portrait, the best painting that I've ever done, okay? Just as like, a, a, I suppose, a test of my skills, okay? Just to see if there was no deadlines for a certain commission or something like that, that just to see how good I could make something, putting all my efforts into it. Okay, so knowing that Kat is such a good photographer, um, right from the beginning, we went. I went to her house and um, used her photography equipment and took many, many, many photos and picked the best ones, tried them from all different angles, all different subjects, all different poses, lights, and things like that. And this one that we picked, um, I picked it. It's very simple, like a, a traditional portrait pose but there is a certain light in the eyes it looks like she's thinking and also it's got this what I always think of as like a thought bubble behind her head here um, so it suggests like there is something going on there is it's, you know like deep in thought and there's something happening there it's not just like a, um, a plain old um, just a person sitting there there is a story to the picture okay so once we got this pose what we're going to do is um, select the composition. So I did that. And now, in my compositions lately, something I learned in the last couple of years was about the, um, uh, you know, the, the composition laws of the old masters in the Renaissance, where they would divide the canvas into sections by the, you know, the Pythagoras lines. And then when major points of your composition hit along these lines it makes it more pleasing to the eye so this is what I've done here like if you take a diagonal from corner to corner a fringe falls across it and if you go from corner to middle things little points like the corners of the ear and the thing in uh, hair here this because she's got a headdress on if you can't tell will all hit along lines like that and there's another one this way where it doesn't have to be it doesn't have to be subjects in the picture, it can be just light lines, like um, shapes of the shadows and things. They all follow one of these lines. So the composition is a little bit more thought out than you would immediately think to look at it. But within just a person sitting on a stool, you can still find that kind of thing. So that was made what made that interesting. Okay, now I painted this in black and white. Um, it, it should be pointed out that this painting is not finished at this stage. I am gonna color it. Um, stop screaming no, everybody's screaming no at me, but it's going to happen. The, what's going to happen? Well, when I did it black and white, I wanted to do it as like a tonal test of my skill, I suppose. Um, so what you do is you, you um, desaturate your photo, and then you mix, I don't know, about eight or nine greys from black to white on your palette before you start. And then you literally just um, pick and choose as you go along. Um, matching the photograph and applying each grey in the right area so say here I know that my lightest light is on a forehead right at the top of a forehead so I don't think that is even pure white there I think it's perhaps a number two so if white was a number one this is a number two grey so it's a, like a shade lower but so you would paint that there and then you will kind of forget about the number two and you go to the number three when it gets a little bit deeper and so on and so forth and you can match as you go along and because you're doing it this way the picture looks quite 3d like she looks like she's jumping out of the canvas or you could like put your hand behind her head because of the depth you get and that all comes from the tone so if you paint a colored painting um, and it looks quite flat it's because of your tones it's not particularly a color mixing it's like the light and dark and things like that 
um, and also colors get cooler as they recede into the background so if you think about warmer colors coming towards you cooler, color, cooler colors going back then that's when your pictures start to really jump out when you think about that as you're doing it okay so this is finished okay and then um, it's now dry so really what I could do now is start coloring it immediately if I wanted to um, but I've been doing some other paintings in between so it's still black and white but what I'm going to do is I'm going to mix very thin layers of oil paint and glaze over the top one at a time letting each layer dry in between and then applying another glaze and building up the color so all of this underwork in the black and white should um, shine through and make the paint lift and the idea is when it's finished that it's going to be kind of a 3D image almost because you're literally looking through uh, layers of paint. It's a, it's, a, it's a technique of the old masters so hopefully it's going to work. I'm just, going to, I'm just testing um, what I'm capable of. It's, it's taken an awful long time up to this point to paint it. It's going to take an awful lot longer before it's finished but I'm pretty happy with this. Um, I think it's probably one of the best paintings I've ever done personally and um, also it's a good subject because me and Kat are pretty good friends now and it's always more interesting to paint friends from the point of view as a, of a portrait artist because you can see something in them that other people don't and then you have to try and capture that uh, as like a personal challenge uh, and it's always it's always more difficult if you know the person because you can tell immediately if something is wrong with that painting and you've got to get every single little brush mark correct and um, capture those little bits of personality that nobody else sees. So this was a really fun painting to paint and uh, I'm very pleased with it and I'll probably do another video on this one uh, before I get rid of it. Okay, so thanks very much. On to the next painting. Cheers.